Today, we'll cover loop recording MIDI data from external hardware. To do this, we need both MIDI in and MIDI out working with our external equipment. I'm going to be using a Moog Sub 37, Novation Mini Nova, and Roland Octopad. I connected all three to the computer via USB and have gone ahead and set up three instances of MIDI out for each instrument. Now we need to make sure MIDI in to FL Studio is enabled for these devices. To do this, open the Options menu and select MIDI settings. From this window, we can see all of the available MIDI devices. Here, it is important to make sure the device you use is enabled and assigned a port number. To enable a device, select it and check the Enable button. Some devices might have functions like arpeggiators that need to be synchronized to FL Studio. Do this by selecting the device in the output panel and checking Send Master Sync button. Once your external hardware has been enabled and assigned a port number, you can close this window. Each device can only be played by the MIDI out plugin with the correct port and MIDI channel. However, we also need to make sure that the device's MIDI in data is only recorded to its corresponding MIDI out plugin channel. More simply put, we need to restrict each MIDI out plugin channel to the device it is meant to talk to, otherwise all devices will record data to the selected or highlighted channel. I'll begin with the Moog Sub 37 MIDI out plugin. By right clicking on the plugin and selecting Receive Notes From, then select Moog Sub 37 from the drop down and All Channels. This means any data coming from any MIDI channel on the Sub 37 will only be received by this MIDI out instance. We can see an indication of this by the lock icon that appears on the MIDI Out plugin for the Sub 37. Now I'll repeat this process for the Mini Nova and the Octopad. Now all of our hardware is locked to its corresponding MIDI Out plugin. This gives us a kind of communication loop where performances can be recorded to a MIDI Out plugin, where it will, in turn, send the recorded MIDI back to the instrument. Now we'll set FL Studio for loop recording. First, select Record. Here we get a dialog asking what kind of information to record. If you have disabled this pop-up, you can right-click the record button. Select Notes and Automation, because we plan to record a MIDI score from our devices and not audio. Now FL Studio is armed for recording, but we need to tell it we want to perform loop recording, so we also need to enable the loop recording button. Next, we can enable blend recording. This enables overdubbing, so notes are added to existing notes rather than replacing them. Last, I will turn on the metronome, so I can keep track of tempo while recording. Now, all we have to do is get in place with our instrument and begin recording. I'm going to begin with the Octopad and show you how to begin recording and use the blend recording or overdubbing function. To control FL Studio while recording, I'm going to use a tablet with the ImageLine Remote app installed. The app allows you to start and stop recording, as well as some other functions like enabling and disabling the metronome and overdubbing. To begin recording, just press play and wait for the metronome count off. So I've recorded a basic beat. With blend recording enabled, I can add more sounds and rhythms to the beat as it plays. If I turn off blend recording and begin to play, the new loop will entirely replace what was previously recorded. This can be a problem if you don't have the metronome enabled. Once we have something new recorded, we can enable blend recording to begin overdubbing again. 
Enabling and disabling Blend Record can be useful if you want to change a pattern or fix an imperfect performance. I have to come clean and admit I did not play that beat perfectly in time. This beat looks so precise because of input quantization. The quantize snap grid is determined by the global snap option, which can be set to any beat division. If you set global snap to none, line, or cell, there will be no input quantization. If you don't want to use the quantize feature, you can right click on the record button and uncheck it from the quantize section. Now that we have the basics of MIDI loop recording down, let's see if we can start a composition with our three instruments. I'll begin with a beat on the octopad. Now, add a soft pad using the mini nova. I think we need to add an octave up to the pad. Sounding good. I think we can do without the metronome now. Finally, I'll add a simple lead with the sub 37. Here's what makes this type of recording truly great. Because we have only been recording MIDI to FL Studio and not audio data, the instruments are being played in real time by FL Studio. This means we can change parameters like filter, and oscillator shape and tunings on the fly as the loop plays. We can even go so far as to change sounds entirely to give our beat a different feel. This allows us the freedom to continue to work with our sounds and develop our compositions dynamically. Until next time, enjoy MIDI loop recording with FL Studio.